Hello beautiful beloved Twin Flames, this is Stephanie Parasha, Divine Light, coming out to you from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, this energy update is very power packed, full of a lot of information, a lot of downloads and a lot of energy, so I'm just giving you a pre-warning so that you've got some time to sit and process and integrate some of what I'm going to be sharing with you. Some of it is information about the current energies and what's been going on. Uh, there's also some guidance and advice uh, from our beloved spirit teams that are working with us to help us on our journeys uh, and I'm also going to share with you some of my own personal experiences within my own twin flame union uh, that have been going on over these last the last week and funnily enough just as I was about to sit down and gather my thoughts together and I've been writing up a few things on a piece of paper to kind of remind myself what I'm talking about getting all prepared to sit down and record and then my twin actually called me <laughs> um, and so we had a he actually left a message because I didn't quite catch it at the right time and it was beautiful because I was able to in some ways I love having a voice message from him because it means I can listen to his voice <laughs> a little bit corny but um, you know and, and I love just getting mesmerized and carried away by the sound of his voice and the things that he was saying and how many also hidden kind of messages there were within the message itself and a lovely synchronicity as well um, that was just kind of blew my mind really and blew my heart open so I've just been having this little kind of conversation back and forth with him because um, we leave voice messages for each other and it was it's just kind of cute it's a nice kind of yeah I can't even describe it but hopefully you're understanding my energy as I'm talking to you so and amongst all this we are transiting and I am in the aftermath I would say of the super blue blood full moon eclipse Leo and Leo um, that's been pounding us like oh my gosh um, I did not sleep hardly a wink of sleep last night um, between the times that the full moon eclipse was happening it was kind of our time in New Zealand between a sort of about midnight and 2 30 a.m that everything just got completely amped up on high the frequencies were just crazy and I just was all over the <laughs> all over the place and could hardly sleep and at the same time there was this massive storm brewing and basically it was a tropical cyclone that decided to hit New Zealand with all this incredibly heavy rain and wind and it was um, huge high tides um, that brought up a lot of debris and caused some places to be evacuated and so you know again the symbology of the energy that's going on right now, big, 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 big intense. So I am pretty sure I've been talking to most people around and that everybody's experiencing very much a similar feeling of being quite triggered, uh, lots of negative emotions coming up, being stirred up, um, anger and upset and, and irritation and grief and a lot of emotions. And, and I must say I've been experiencing a myriad of, of a lot of um, them and also being challenged on some of my core uh, you know, lessons that I need to learn in this life around, particularly for me, it was setting boundaries and um, getting really challenged on that one. Um, and amongst all of this in my personal life, I have, um, I quit my job. What a great way to go out, eh? On the twin, on the <laughs> full, full moon, um, full blood red moon. Uh, blue blood moon sorry and you know that's in true light worker style I felt really kind of proud of myself that I um, transited that full moon with such a big life event um, so that I'll remember it you know um, so what most of the astrologers and the energy sort of readers out there are talking about a lot and I'm sure we're all feeling this is that unconscious shadow that's making its way to the surface and kind of being shown um, and full moons do that you know they bring up those hidden um, unhealed unconscious wounds and shadow um, aspects of the self that have kind of polarized and um, so oh excuse me sorry I've dropped my piece of paper so I just need to pick that up now there's also kind of another theme that's been coming in that 
I'm trying to make sense of. It's a little bit scientific in the way that it's been shown to me, and I'm trying to translate how I receive the message around this. So I'm seeing a lot of the polarized effect of uh, within the body how and, and, and the whole energy of the planet, the polarization. We, I'm getting shown a polar reversal in some way like how that's happening is to me it's kind of been explained as a reverse cha current charge or reverse charge current where there's a flip so let's just use our chakra system as an example so for the feminine energy that's a polarized energy uh, the feminine aspect in term, we, when we're talking about polarization generally speaking operates from the higher chakras so let's just say the the crown the third eye the throat and down into the heart and the masculine polarization tends to operate from the lower chakras the base and um, sacral chakra and up into the solar plexus so we're kind of being I'm being shown that there's going to be a flip in that um, direction for a lot of people so where they've been out of balance there's going to kind of be a bit of a flip and for what that's going to what the major kind of influence that's going to have uh, that will start to become obvious is the those people holding a feminine, stronger feminine charge or they've been operating on the feminine will now start to use more of their masculine energies and will start kind of charging ahead, being a lot more confident, not being as needy as before, kind of just really willing to kind of extend themselves and take big leaps of faith and be really brave and courageous and use some of that sort of um, start operating from more of the base areas so you may notice your base chakra kind of coming in online if you've been more in those feminine or, or operating in the higher chakras um, the masculines will start to feel obviously very much the opposite of that those that have been operating in a masculine polarity I'm not saying that's necessarily males although it will be predominantly males there are also many females in the female gendered body that may carry more of the masculine energy that will now feel that um, they will start to come more into their heart space, feel a little bit more vulnerable, start to get more in touch with their emotions, see things in a softer, gentler kind of way. So that's kind of how that might play out in our daily life. Um, so I'm being, I've written he, uh, another kind of point here, just moving on to another kind of part of our energy report is to always have as much awareness as you possibly can of your current emotional energy state so as light workers we use uh, a measure we, we measure our emotional state which tells us where our energy is at so um, obviously the more awareness we have of that the better I mean I had this week to be quite honest have been quite all over the place with my emotions and uh, at times I know that I've been shifting and clearing some stuff that's been coming up. I've been um, several times at the having a lot, quite a lot of anxiety. I've had a couple of tearful moments this week. Um, I've felt a little bit quite on edge with my emotions. So um, I've also, when I've felt that at those times when I'm kind of going a little bit over the edge where it's not comfortable, something needs healing, I, I take the time to sit down and use the tools that are available to our spiritual tools, our, our special powers of transformation to heal uh, those aspects of self that are really needing that attention right now really using the light I've been you know meditating giving myself the time as in amongst all the madness to just sit down take a few moments anchor in use my column of light to anchor into my body down into the earth and bringing in the white light and asking for support uh, from the angels you know these are just really simple but important tools that we need to have at this time continuing with my clearings of old beliefs old karmic ties you know we should be getting pretty adept now at knowing how to use these tools uh, to work our way through um, and navigate the some of the more difficult energies um, which are obviously very very powerful right now um, I'm feeling that it's actually the light uh, quotients in, on the planet that are increasing, that are creating these kind of activities. 
of energy around us. Um, so, and amongst all this, you know, um, I got given a song uh, that I was, it was a Tony Child song, and it wasn't particularly the words of the song that were important, but what they were trying to guide me to was the name of the album in which that song came from. So they wanted to, um, the, and the name of the album was House of Hope. So they're kind of saying, don't give up hope because it's so many times on this journey it, beca- it can become difficult and it's another energy wave and you're like, ah. And they're t- kind of telling me, and I know many of us have heard these words before, but I'm just going to say what I get told and, and just interpret that. So they're kind of saying we're at that midway tipping point. And I know I've heard, we've had many midway tipping points where we've just tipped over the scales, but this is much of a stronger one. So I guess what they're saying is there are more energies on the scale which creates a more of an impact so in the past maybe it's been a certain group have managed to reach a certain point and it's tipped now it's a bigger group so this they're showing me kind of a midway point where if we're going to divide things into stages we could say you know the initial meeting of your twin flame then you know getting together and having sparks fly and in many cases we get the the separation or the preparation some of us have managed to kind of get to a stage which I defined a few months back called the walker phase where I believed that there were some of us that were feeling a little bit more comfortable to spend more time um, in proximity with our twin but in a slow fashion so that we didn't kind of short circuit each other now I feel we're a little bit more moving closer into that midpoint sort of section where I guess we're meeting in the midway points of solar plexus and uh, heart chakra so that's where we've been doing a lot of healing of those emotions healing the traumas a lot of twins have been doing a lot of great work there and that's helping us uh, connect it more at that midway point and helping with the tip of the balances where the polarities are needing to become more balanced, come into balance. Um, Now, what else have we got here? So Lady Nada, yes, that's right. So Lady Nada has been coming in very strongly for me um, this last couple of weeks and I bought these beautiful new tarot cards uh, sorry oracle cards and I did do one card last last week for twins um, that was a great card and but I've been getting personally my little card that's been popping up and it's come up twice for me so it's been you know obviously wanting to work with me and that is um, the Lady Nada card uh, and just see if I can find it. I think I put it back. Yeah, here it is. The Pink Rose of Lady Nada. And when I went and looked up a little bit more about Lady Nada, it wasn't necessarily, I don't think, in the actual book that went with the card. But I had did not realise, and I'd probably already been um, working with Lady Nada's energy, but misinterpreting it as Mary Magdalene's energy, because Lady Nada herself is the one that has been given the role of helping twin flames unite on the planet and she is the keeper of the sacred flame of the temple of divine union so you know if you want to if this resonates with you um, I suggest you know that you embrace some of Lady Nada's energy and um, invite her to come work with you because she is here for us and she is, is a very powerful healer Um, And she's also a very grounded healing energy as well. So for for those that are, you know, maybe finding the spiritual part of um, things can be a little bit, when we kind of lift off a little bit and it's hard to ground in, Lady Nut is good for that. So I'm I'm just going to put the um, phone down for a minute um, while I shuffle. Oh, actually, before I do that, um, did I need to talk about... No, I think I've already mentioned about my twin, haven't I? I've already t- talked about our contact this week. So that's fine. Um, yeah, I'll do a shuffle for us. And let's ask what um, are the messages that will help Twin Flames this week on their journey um, towards closer, more connected unions, more harmonious unions, more loving unions. will connect each of the twins... Uh, to their own higher selves and into their own uh, power and love and light. And let's see what's coming up. Let's see if there's going to be a card jump out for us. Uh, these are, sorry if I hadn't mentioned already, the Light Worker Oracle Cards by Alana Fairchild. 
Okay, so I'm getting the energy of this card. Excuse me, I'll hold the phone up so you can hear me better. Hmm. Okay, orbs of light we got. Okay, so I have actually already had that one this week. And orbs of light, I interpreted that as meaning you're getting a lot of support around. So there's a lot of these little kind of Okay, hi again. I was just uh, midway through that message and I got a phone call, so I got interrupted. But I think that was for a reason because that card that I was about to read, I didn't wasn't actually resonating with it. So I did another shuffle and another one came out that feels a lot more like um, that's got a more apt message for us right now. And the card is number 44. So again, um, 44 to me always represents in my brain, uh, bringing through the spiritual onto the earth plane. So um, the, the 44 card, fourth card is the seventh ray of ritual, order and ceremony. When And I'm going to read it out to you. So when the gift of the seventh ray enters your life, something new is being formed, something that will benefit your world. There may be an increased interest in magic, ceremony and ritual for healing purposes. Resonating with high frequency violet light and the archangel Zachiel, the seventh ray also helps transmute energy from lower to higher frequency. It is a spiritual cleansing agent that allows the truth of spiritual freedom, empowerment and choice to be seen and felt, restoring hope and joy to the heart. And I'm just going to add here that last night on the full moon I actually held a healing circle here for I think there was about 10 of us um, in my community that came along and we did um, a lot of healing. We brought in the violet flame, we brought in some really beautiful light energy and held space together so I was guided that that was something that I needed to do um, in order to hold space for a larger number of people. I'm getting more and more that um, to encourage um, to be encouraged to do that so you may also be feeling that call or, or at least contributing your energy to a group as well is really important because it wasn't although I was the, um, you know holding the space in terms of facilitating the space all of the energies combined were what made it powerful and it was just everybody's soul and heart coming and dropping in together and when we all merged together the energy became very very powerful so that's what's powerful Right, I'm going to continue reading. The seventh ray is very active upon the earth at this time. All of humanity is being affected by it. The seventh ray is the push-pull between the old and the new. I'm sure many of you are feeling that. The life that has been and can no longer continue in that form and the new life that wants to evolve from the old. So, you know, that's been true for many of us leaving relationships, jobs, houses, and very much true for me right now. It honours traditions and ancestral wisdom that serve new life. When the seventh ray enters your life, you are being asked to balance your attachment to what has been with an openness to the new. It is a time to fearlessly question what has been, honour what continues to hold value for you, and dismiss what no longer serves you. The seventh ray also creates form from invisible and tangible spiritual energy. These are the inspired solutions and synchronicities that seem to come out of nowhere. They are signs of the divine order happening. The seventh ray brings an alignment with that divine order. And the more you are willing to invoke and allow that energy to bless you, the more your life will align itself with a genius of creativity, solutions and loving opportunities the universe wants to bring to your world. The gifts of ritual, order and ceremony are ways to attract this energy. Conscious ceremony done in service to unconditional divine love feeds a need for sacred embodiment. It is the hunger within the soul that many seek to feed through religion and others through the less conscious rituals of addiction. Ritual can be something that keeps you stuck or opens you to the sacred. Choosing a spiritual space practice to engage on a regular basis, creating your own spiritual system will help you call the genius of seventh ray energy into your life. The spiritual practice might be a daily prayer followed by a short conscious dance or yoga session, a meditation, a walk in nature or some combination of these. Find what works for you. Do that regularly. Make it a priority. You can invite spirit into your life through a simple and ordered system that you do on a regular basis, even if only for 5 or 10 minutes a day. 
then the new life, the new you, that order that brings an expansive idea to life and the world can happen. The challenge with the seventh ray is not to become obsessed with the future, with the new, to the extent that you forget about the valuable aspects of what already is. It is about developing what has value, not rejecting outright anything from the past. The past can teach us wisdom and help us create a more loving future if we allow ourselves to balance our passion for the future with a respect for what has been. Mm. So again, that's the balance of the polarities, isn't it? The gift of the seventh ray is the ability to live as an embodied divine presence. For humans who don't trust or even recognize the love of the divine in their hearts as yet, those who do are great supporters. The seventh ray empowers us to use loving ritual to invite divine presence to fill us and our lives. It also teaches us how to use our consciousness to clean up our own energy field and the energy field of the world around us so the divine can show its face more clearly. The comfort of this can help free all beings from anguish and suffering. Yeah, well, so I've, you know, also been getting this message very loud and clear to continue to hold space for these kind of ceremonies and um, some of you may have heard my last video and I'm probably going to mention it in every video um, until the actual time that it takes place but uh, I was guided to bring through the Taj Mahal Twin Flame Activation Ceremony which I'm going to be doing um, in about a month or more, but six weeks from now on the 18th of March at the Taj Mahal in India um, to activate and anchor in the energies of divine love and light and light up the grids again because some of our divine love and light grids have you know gone a little bit um, quiet and need to be turned back on and reactivated with some of our beautiful power of love from our hearts I've already had uh, several people join up for that and you know it's um, open it's not a great um, contribution it's a very affordable amount of money um, to contribute your energy towards that because what I feel is that it's all of us combined that actually do this work and again although I'm the one sort of bringing people together and facilitating the energies you are the ones and it's each one individual's power source that j joins together and merges which is what brings to life the energies and anchors them onto the planet and activates everyone and you know I'm a great more of a more believer in these kinds of ceremonies um, many of us think you know that things will just happen on their own and they do but you know you can feel the energy difference when a lot of people get together we all get excited it's a great energy to have you know to keep activating that and bringing it through um, and activating it is a wonderful thing wouldn't you think so uh, yeah so I'll put keep I'll put the link to that ceremony below the twin flame Taj Mahal activation ceremony and the information about it is on my website and I'm, I've also done a YouTube introduction video on what that's all about um, yeah so check that out I think I'm going to leave that mes this message for this week here and uh, in the meantime of course I'm sending you out a lot of love from my heart to yours and I'm actually being told that I've forgotten to mention one more page that was part of that um, card that I picked up so there's a little invocation I'm going to end on that so we'll leave that with you and then I'll close it from there so the invocation uh, for this particular energy of this week for twin flames is I now accept of my own free will the blessing and grace of the seventh ray of ritual order and ceremony and the assistance of the unconditionally loving masters on this ray, the violet flame of Saint Germain and Archangel Zachiel, I open to the magic of creativity, divine genius and the ability to translate spiritual concepts into real world experiences for the greatest good. May I discover and use my innate power for conscious and loving ritual and ceremony to enrich and invite spiritual presence into the world. May all beings feel safe and consciously held in a loving divine order according to the great plan of love. Through my own free will, so be it.